Hey there, Splash just here. We're just going to look at server and client builds for the kit and how you set them up and use them. This is quite a broad topic. There's a lot here that I can't cover, such as, as drilling through your firewall and um, getting your router redirects pointed correctly because honestly they're all very different and I don't know or understand them all. But we'll look at basically generating a server on a Windows machine which will run as a standalone server that can be accessed across the LAN by your um, development team and possibly even accessed outside by an IP address for testers uh, and you will run Unity, the game within Unity for the client. So um, the first thing we'll need to look at is when you're building your server, obviously under build settings, um, we're using a NIT 0, zero NIT MMO. A scene contains, it's the demo scene from the system, it contains uh, if you look here, all the server instance, the client instance, the map spawn networks, etc, etc. Um, this is what you want as your primary init. You'll need all your maps and your home screen. Uh, by default, um, all this stuff is discussed within uh, Syrian's documentation, which I'll put a link down below, which is very, very good and all you really need to know. But for your server, for our Windows server, we're going to need an architecture being x86-64 and we want to tick this one server build. This uh, builds a headless player build or a headless server build. What headless means is it doesn't display the GUI. It just runs as a console app. You don't need a GUI um, from the server. You don't particularly want anyone to be able to access it with a mouse and keypad and no one's going to be playing it. It just needs to be sitting there responding to client messages and returning them. Uh, and then we build that and uh, build it to a folder where you will remember on its uh, on its own, nothing else in it, and where you'll remember. This path is quite important. You'll need to remember where you built this server. I'm just building it to a bin folder underneath my Unity project. Now I'll turn this back off, back to our client build, because we're going to want to run this. So we built this, we built our server out, and if we have a look at it, uh, server kit bin, this is what you'll end up with. Um, it has all your resource files, uh, some mono, and your actual executable. This won't work. If you run this, it just doesn't work. Um, in order to get our server running, we're going to need to create these way to create a batch file. Uh, run server.bat here, which will run, obviously, the initial server executable. And I'll, I'll add this batch file in. Um, as an example in the documentation and where we would have run our server if you just run this executable it doesn't really do very much so we need to command it to do a few things we want it to start the map spawn server so that there is a server that will allow to spawn maps we want to set the executable path and this is why we needed to know the executable path of the server executable so full qualified path here we want to start the central server we want to start a chat server we want to start the database server so this is the commands to tell property parameter commands to tell um, the Unity program to run all these servers on start and we set a machine address because we're running across a LAN. Now this machine address is the IP address of the machine I'm running on. It is a local IP address of the machine I'm running on. It doesn't need to be a universal internet address, it is just a local address. Um, if you look at the documentation this command essentially sets um, variables within the init MMO such as network manager, spawn manager, chat network manager just changes them to match this address. Uh, you can leave this command out um, and it'll just keep whatever the settings are in these which are currently uh, 127.0.0.1 or localhost. So got our batch file created and if we run our server we will see what looks like a console app running. Uh, any error messages in here will be thrown up. Doesn't look like anything. All looks great. Now, error messages will also be written out to this log folder, which is quite important. And if we go back to our project, we'll notice that things like Central Network Manager within the init MMO has a current log level, and there's various settings that you can change it to. If you've got some problems, you can change it to Developer and have a lot more logging output. Otherwise, Ideally, you want to keep it as minimum as possible on a build server, on a, on a final release server, simply because it's, uh, it costs a lot to write all these logs out. So 
you don't really want to be writing out all this rubbish. So um, you'll notice that all of these map network server has logs, chat network server is set to info. And here we see it was also our network addresses. Now this was overridden when I used machine address in the batch file. None of this stuff has been changed. I've just basically left it as by default. So the defaults are fine. One thing I have changed is we have a look at our database network manager. I've changed this to the SQLite database. Now by default in the demo it's set to a MySQL database which most people won't have up and running and if you're just doing a test uh, build server for, for development team and for a few testers honestly I would set it to a SQLite database. The database is created by the, the, the program automatically on start. You don't need to worry about generating any databases or fields or tables like I did in my previous demo video and it's fine for 10, 20, 30 users. It'll work fine. Now, obviously in release you're going to want to really look at MySQL database. Um, you're probably going to have a, a MySQL server running on your Linux cloud or whatever it is so you can have a look at the other videos for that sort of information. Um, so that's our server that we've built and we've got running down here that's our server running quite happily. Now we're going to want, to want to run our client within Unity. So we have a look at our scenes. We'll notice there is an init MMO client only scene. This has a lot less stuff in it. And if you check the documentation, it's also recommended you put an if def, uh, I think it's called client build, in your um, project settings. You'll find there is some, there's a, a define section, scripting define symbols here. So if you check the documentation in Syrians, a web page, there'll be a define that you have to add here when building the MMO client only um, version. This isn't important for testing and debugging, but if you don't do that and you release uh, the game, it will have the server built and embedded in it. So the users might possibly be able to actually run their own server if they can figure out how to, and you don't really want them to do that. So, anyway, we've now got uh, build settings. We're our MMO client only. We've got our server build turned off. So we will run our client within Unity. Um, and we will select local server. I'll talk about these three in a second. Connect. And pass. Log in. And there's our mage. And we are now running on the server. Uh, we can easily confirm that. Now, when you're closing this console server down, you don't really need to do anything other than just shut the window down in Windows or close it in Unix. you notice when I close it down, it gracefully shuts everything down, saves everybody, logs everybody off, and disconnected my server has been closed. So that's that works very nicely. Now, you notice here I've got three servers. This is uh, done in the init MMO client only, There's a client only instance and by default there was just one. That's an MMO network setting which is found uh, by default in the assets unity MMO demo game data network settings. You'll have a local and this game object essentially has the title that it displays in game, the network address of the server and the network port of the server 7000. I've generated two more LAN which has the LAN address, LAN server, and then the address of the internal uh, IP address of the machine that I'm on, and there's an internet server there which will have the internet address, the external internet address of the computer that I'm on. And if you go to client instance, I've just expressed this to three, and you've now got all three, which allows the, um, the client a choice when they log on. So uh, we'll run our server again. one last look at this because I'm going to run a second client so local server will stick with and we'll start game and this isn't going to be all that interesting because you can't see it but I'm logging on on a second machine on the network user 2 pass 2 and I'll start the game and somewhere here 
Oh, there we are. This character over here is the other character, which is very hard to control with a second PC, is running on a second machine on the network. On a very tiny window. So that gives us a basic server capabilities. Um, there are a lot of you have a look at the uh, instant server there's a lot of network settings these are generally the local network address not a remote IP address that's something to remember um, you saw the port here with 7000 you saw my clients were all connecting so this central network manager if you look at the documentation you'll see the relationship between all of these but your central network manager is the primary server that the client communicates to this server then hands the client off to maybe spawns a network and then passes it a new IP address um, the chat network it'll hand it off to a chat network etc etc database networks can be our different servers now uh, you can obviously build your game with s distinct servers here if you have a rather complicated network uh, environment so your I don't know your MySQL database server may be on a, uh, a different physical machine to your network server, your network server might be on a physical different machine to your uh, map network server and the chat server might have its own machine too just to sort of offset um, offset the you know the CPU usage but uh, by default they're all these will all be overwritten anyway for my situation because of this server bat will overwrite the machine address to this local IP address and all these values will be overwritten um, so that's a basic look at running a server um, with the kit. Now, the if you looked at, um, I did have a. Oh, I've actually run the MMO. So say that you can actually run the init MMO as a client. You don't need to run client only, but do we aware they are two different? Uh, Unity files, and you'll end up with two different server-server selections on it. I can try and connect it as an internet server. I haven't um, gotten around to drilling holes through my actual router, so this goes off and connects to my remote IP address, but doesn't actually work. Can't find the server because the router itself is not letting the traffic in. So you'd need to uh, edit your router um, firewall to allow ports 7000, 6000, 6001, uh, 6002 I think primarily uh, through the file, through your router. It's also possible that your um, ISP might not allow remote servers so that's something else that you need to worry about. Um, anyway, this is basically, I'll document below the, where Syrian's information can be checked out. It's uh, probably a bit more detailed than what I've explained and uh, I'm going to pop another video up in a minute about how you can automate a lot of this server build stuff making it a bit easier anyway uh, have a good one we'll talk later cheers